In this video, I want to address a very serious issue, and that serious issue is essentially the negative health impacts of the finance industry on the health of their employees, right? Now, I myself have worked at these companies, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, Morgan Stanley, I've worked in the finance industry in investment banking and sales and trading for over a decade, for over 10 years. And there's been some instances very recently that have been quite public of very questionable, scary type of scenarios, right? We have an instance here where we have 100 hour work weeks, heart issues for quite young employees, right? In this case, you can see on your screen right now, we have a 35 year old who was who's no, no, no longer here essentially because of job related stress that ha had him having one hour, 100 hour work weeks and essentially, as I say, no longer being here due to heart issues. So we really need to think through carefully what is going on in the finance industry that is creating these type of issues. Leo Lucanes, who was working at Bank of America, they're working in the FIG department and uh, they essentially died of, as I say, a heart issue. They have another instance where a credit trader at a Bank of America, so there's two employees at Bank of America, so I don't know what's going on there at their type of, uh, you know, maybe toxic work environment based on what we can see here. And they're talking about the young people's health, right? They're want to focus more on that. Now, a lot of this is kind of a bit suspect because the reality of working at any finance company and not having a go at Bank of America here, they do put their employees under a lot of pressure. There's a lot of passive aggressive uh, comments and competition and backstabbing and pressure to work more and more hours to do more and more work to drain yourself and burn yourself out and not really reap the rewards of that the company is and then you're fed a lie about a high paying bonus that doesn't always exist so these are the type of uh, realities that you you may have to deal with in the industry now we also have see this is an ongoing issue as it occurred many times in the past it says bankers with heart problems are nothing new we have an instance back in 2018 where gavin mcdonald who was the head of m a at morgan stanley died at his desk he died at his desk one evening now i worked in this office actually not in 2018 but I worked at Morgan Stanley in their office in Canary Wharf. So if this guy was dead, he probably died, um, you know, a few left. I know where roughly the, the, the floors are in the office. He would probably be a few floors above me dying at his desk, right, on a Friday evening. I've worked many late Friday evenings at Morgan Stanley and at other companies that I mentioned earlier, right? This is a very serious issue, you know. I mean, if employees are basically dying at their desk, how much is the money that they're earning worth, right? And if he's the head of M&A, he's probably making a high, very high six-figure salary and getting a six-figure bonus, right? That's really a consideration you need to make if you want to enter the finance industry. Can you balance the, the, the stressful hours and the toxic work environments? Again, not picking on Morgan Stanley specifically, but in general, in the finance industry, can you balance that with your other commitments in life, maybe family, having kids, focusing on your own health, because there's lots of toxic environments you've got to consider. If someone just dies at their desk uh, due to a heart issue on one Friday evening, could that be you, right? And this is the problem with the finance industry or many office jobs in general. They don't really think about things logically. They just have a culture like, oh, you have to come in at this time because that's the standard work hours. If things are gonna get busy in the afternoon and evening, right at 5 p.m 6 p.m the afternoon then why not let employees come in a lot later you can let employees come in after lunch you know and i know that might sound weird or unconventional but if you're going to demand that they're going to have to stay there until 2 a.m in the morning just let them arrive later and not just at 10 a.m let them arrive at like after lunch so this is how it should work right and this is what, what i'm trying to explain to you in some of my videos is you you're probably thinking are oh, you going to work for a major financial company they must be super organized right they must not have super uh inefficient processes they might be able to automate a lot of the uh, the tedious work that you probably have to do as a routine thing right no they, they probably won't they probably expect you as an individual to do it so these now as i say people should be able to stay later so imagine if you this is what would be a healthy work environment instead of scenarios like this where people have heart attacks from working in the office god or god knows how many hours right 12 14 18 hour days they should probably be able to get to work after lunch so say they start their 
say they wake up in the morning, go to the gym, eat something healthy, rest, relax, maybe chat with their co-workers or their family and friends, have their lunch um, and then get to work in the afternoon. Let's just say they, their work day starts at 2 p.m. So they start at 2 p.m., they work throughout the afternoon, throughout the evening and finish at 2 a.m. if that's what's required. So that's like a 12 hour work day, still, still quite long work hours, but then they can go, go home at 2 a.m., sleep, go to the gym, have their late breakfast, lunch, and then get into work. And this is what I mean. There's something about the workplace environment is like they don't, particularly in finance, they want to own your time. They want to own your life. They don't want to do things efficiently. They don't want to do things logically. They want to basically make you a slave to the job. And then you think you're getting a high paying salary or you have a high status job, a high status job title. And then that's what's meant to give you fulfillment in life when actually you're only there really to work to earn a significant amount of money. I have a very important article here, right? Which is around Goldman Sachs. Now I worked at Goldman Sachs, as I mentioned, so I do know what it's like being there. Um, but they have they had a leak, which is quite interesting to look through. Firstly, it says here the presentation notes on average first year analysts, that's junior employees, are working 95 hours a week and sleeping five hours a night. So that's not healthy to be doing that. Right. And as I say, things could be the work could be organized in a more efficient way. So it's not like that. But they decide to kind of put you through the, the, this kind of hamster wheel this grueling work uh, environment to see what you can do. So it's talking about the effect on the physical and mental health, right? First year analysts reported that stress had been detrimental to both their mental and physical health. And when they rate their mental health before and after starting the job, they went from eight, 8.8 .8 to 2.8, right? That's a massive decrease. So I, I, if you're watching this right now, I want you to rate your mental health on a normal day when you're not working and then a day where you are working. Is it that radical difference as an interesting experiment? I would say my mental health on the weekend probably is an eight, and when I'm doing my job, it might be going down to a five, but to see a drop from like 8.8 .8 to 2.8, from let's just say eight to two, that's a radical drop. So it does tell you a lot about this work environment. And then rate your physical health before and after starting of the job. So someone goes from a nine to a two. Right now, the thing is, when you're working those long hours, it's hard to ma maintain healthy habits, right? These long work hours, you're trying to get a workout in and then you have to squeeze a workout in and you're already mentally and kind of physically exhausted from your day job. So when it comes to going to the gym, you either put it off or it kind of wears you down. It's like mentally taxing to quickly rush and go do a gym session, then go back to work. Yeah, I see many people and I worked at Goldman Sachs. They have a, a, a office gym, things like that. And people would do this. They would work like, you know, 10 hours, then quickly rush off to the work gym for like an hour and a half then uh go to the canteen and eat something then come back to the desk and do more work and this is like a typical pattern and you should really think like how long is that sustainable like, you could maybe do that for a couple years but can you do that for the five ten years it's probably not sustainable you're probably going to make some major sacrifices to your health uh, through through nutrition or lack of fitness right so their first complaint here is that there's sleep deprivation um, the treatment by senior bankers. Now, I don't want to focus on Goldman Sachs specifically. I don't want to end up with a lawsuit um, on my hands. But in general, the finance industry, not focusing on this company, in general, the finance industry, you do have a lot of bully tactics from the senior management. And they know that you maybe desperately need the job or you want to earn a high salary. So they kind of take advantage of you when you're more junior than them. So uh, treatment by senior bankers is kind of a code word for getting bullied by co uh, co-workers that are more senior than you. Mental and physical stress. Uh, I've been through foster care and it's arguably worse working here. So, so they're saying working at Goldman Sachs is more stressful than being in foster care. So there's a quite an extreme example there. I can't sleep anymore because my anxiety levels are through the roof. My body physically hurts all the time and I'm mentally really in a dark place. Being unemployed is less frightening to me than what my body might succumb to if I keep up this lifestyle. So you've got people saying they'd you know, rather be unemployed, rather be in foster care, physically their body's hurting, they can't sleep because of the anxiety, 
So, I mean, what type of work environment is this? Even if this is a high paying salary, you really got to think it through. So you really need to ask yourself those important questions. Why are you working those long hours? Do you actually want to pursue that career over the course of your life? Are you just looking for some money to make right now? What's the end goal here, right? For you, not for the company, but for you. Because many people think, you know, this kind of finance environment or any corporate job is what you want but a lot of the times there is a culture of fear there is a culture of manipulation there and things like that and you need to ask yourself you know if you're living in a high cost of living area are you reaping the benefits of that or are you just simply paying high tax paying high rent and not really getting paid that much to justify your kind of current approach in life and your career path we have a few other points i wanted to point out here firstly he mentions as you can see in the first red highlight there your life is better as a vp because you can exploit other people even as an associate you can do less work because you can use fear to get the analyst below you to do more work and in the process you end up you become a miserable human being to survive in the industry you have to only care for yourself and that's the reality the way it works is a lot of exploitation how can i exploit the junior employees by mocking them by demeaning them by making them feel like they're worthless and their job is risky in a risky position if they don't do extra work and work those long hours that they demand from them and in the second highlight it explains this in a bit more detail right you've got this mid-level management we all know mid-level management aren't doing much they're just managing juniors with a little bit of advice, but they're kind of overplaced, overpriced, right? Overpaid middlemen. In the second highlight, it mentions people in banking, they just want the pay. So they try to maximize their pay with minimizing the effort. And this is some of the unconventional career advice I do give all of you, because that's really how it works, right? You want to maximize your pay and minimize your effort. If you can delegate work without exploiting people, you should do that because that's the name of the game. That's how it works in the corporate environment. You're trying to delegate as much work as you can to juniors while you get the credit for it, or you at least get the credit for managing those projects, even if junior people are doing that. Uh, don't do it in a demeaning way, which is suggested here uh, how, how it really works in finance but try to do it in a respectful way but you know when you're dealing with these people and this is the last highlight you can see here uh, people at the top of this bank are trying to change the culture but the mds the managing directors are the problem they are not organized so the managing directors are not organized if they were organized they wouldn't ask people to work through the night so this is what you need to understand, right? You're dealing with a lot of management who say they care about equality and whatever, diversity and employee health. They don't really care. They're getting paid very high sums of money to basically manage you and, and treat you quite poorly, but then make sure you're never allowed to criticize things, right? You can't go to your manager's manager and say things aren't really working out. I'm not being treated fairly because no one will believe you or care. So they know they can exploit you. And a good example of this, just to finish up, is we have this JP Morgan... Uh, instance where Jennifer, who's a co-CEO of one of J J JP Morgan's uh, commercial investment banking units, she says nothing's more important than health and well-being, which is a bit of an exaggeration because I know these people at the senior levels, they don't do much work. They just send a few emails. They're here to present themselves in a nice way for senior management while you do all the work. And typically they do look like this. They look like this. Everything about them is focused on their image, right? On how they're presenting themselves. And I've been in the, these people offices, I know how they work and they're not really doing a lot of work. Everything is about managing perception of them and pretending to be this nice approachable person. And in reality, they're not really, you gotta be some level of psychopathy. You gotta be a psychopath on some level to, to get to the senior roles. The truth is you don't need to work that long hours in finance. The truth is, is that the working hours are inefficient. The working hours are long because the the management is inefficient. The management of the workflow is inefficient. And no one really wants to address that. They just want to say, oh, you need to work hard as an employee to get this, to do that, to get the promotion. But that's re in reality, it's just inefficiency that is leading to these issues. So inefficiency leads to long work hours, which leads to people complaining as we can see here at Goldman Sachs. And then their complaints getting discounted with just airy fairy, oh, health and well-being, we care about that. Here's the work gym, you should use that even though there's not much time to do it. Then they sugarcoat it even further after someone literally dies of a heart attack. And then we've got someone else dying. Two, two or three employees have been pointed out throughout my video here of people dying of heart attacks, dying of heart attacks at the desk or playing sport after work. This isn't a sustainable industry. It's not a sustainable work culture. 
and it's something you need to think through carefully if you're pursuing it and that's why I, I can help you through my career advice service to help you guide you through some of this because you're not typically given the truth of what is the reality of working in some of these environments so if you're interested reach out to me in the description there are two recommended videos on your screen right now. You can check those out and leave your leave a comment below on, on your experience of working in this industry or other kind of corporate environments.